All right, so for this problem, this is a very interesting problem regarding uh, attention, objects, and um, police. So this problem uh, brings up a lot of confusion, I guess you could say, in a lot of students, because it doesn't match up. The answer to the problem and the math involving the problem doesn't match up in, with their intuition about what should happen. So the question here is, what should this spring scale read? Okay. And a lot of students might think that it's the sum of these two, right? It's like whatever the force of MR is and whatever the force of ML is, it should like double that or whatever. But we're going to see very soon that it's not going to be that. Okay, so let's start off answering number, number 5.2 first. So 5.2 is saying ML is much smaller than MR, which of the following would you expect to be closest to the reading of on the spring scale in terms of ML, MR, and or G? Okay, so in this, in this problem, by the way, 5.2 and 5.3 are kind of asking the same question. And also, when it says which of the following, there there are, there are um, options be below 5.2, and don't worry about that. It's not important right now for, for what we're going to do. And over here, I've already set up the force diagrams. That should be fairly easy. I've set up the force diagrams for both the left side object and for the left side object and the right side object. So it should be simple. Now we're going to use 5.2 to our advantage, or, the, or better yet, the information given in 5.2 for to our advantage to solve this problem. So it says ML is much smaller than MR. Okay, so one important fact, ML is much smaller than MR. That means the system is going to go this way, right? Which means MR, MR, MR equals negative acceleration and ML equals a positive acceleration. That's just an important fact that's going to be useful later on. And another really important assumption that I already made here. Actually, I didn't write it down here. I'll write it down right here. Lower this. Another important assumption. Accelerations are equal in magnitude, which means that acceleration, not m, Acceleration of L is equal to acceleration of R in magnitude, not in direction necessarily. They could be equal in direction, but they're not necessarily. So these two, these two assumptions are very, very crucial to solving this problem. Okay, so let's get started on the actual math involved in this problem. So let's draw, let's do Newton's second law. Newton's second law. Second law for both problems. Let's go ahead and highlight this. All right, let's do for the left side object first, then we'll do the right side object. For the left side object, we can see from our force diagram up here that it should be T minus MLG. That's equal to ML, the mass times our acceleration. Okay, and also because in this case, it said ML is much smaller than MR. Our acceleration is going to be positive, right? Because we're going to move in the upward direction. And that's the uh, positive Y direction. So we have that, that uh, equation to use. Now let's use the right side problem to figure out a second equation. That's going to be really useful. We can say this. Okay. And if this doesn't make sense, it's really the exact same thing as the previous of... Uh, same thing as the left side objects second law equation the only difference is we're using the mass r instead of mass l and also a negative acceleration because again the object is going down the right side and that's coming from this fact right here that ml is much smaller than mr okay now we have an issue right we have two equations with two unknowns and the two unknowns i'm going to highlight in green T is unknown, and A is unknown. Okay? Those two equations, are, those two variables, not equations, sorry. Those two variables are unknown. So what can we do mathematically to solve this problem? Well, we can figure out one of the variables in terms of the rest of the variables, and then plug that back in. And that's that sounds like jargon to most of you, but what I'm basically saying is, let's solve for A here then whatever we get will be only in terms of MR, G, MR, and T. We can plug that in. We can plug that into A over here. And now we'll have a, an equation that only has tension as the unknown variable. 
So let's do that. Let's do, um, let's solve for a here. So let's get a is equal to t minus mrg divided by mr negative. Okay, perfect. Now I'm just going to distribute that, distribute that negative real quick. So we get negative t plus mrg over mr. So this is a really important problem. Oh, did I just erase all that? There we go. So this is a really useful little piece of information. Because now I can just grab this and plug it straight into this. And I'll do that right under this. So we'll say T minus MLG is equal to ML times negative T plus MRG over MR. Okay. Now I'm just going to distribute that, distribute this ML over to this and this. And I can say T minus MLG is equal to negative MLT plus ML MRG. And each of those is over MR and MR. As you can see, those two things cancel out. Now I have T minus MLG is equal to negative ML over MR T plus ML G. Okay. Now I'm going to add MLG to both sides and I'm going to add ML over MR T to both sides. So these cancel and these cancel. Now I have T plus ML T over MR equals two ML G. Okay, so so far I hope that math makes sense. Um, if not, just go back a little bit and think about each step. I'm just doing, you know, basic algebra, adding and subtracting. Then I'm gonna, this, this is probably the trick, trickiest part in the math. I'm gonna factor out a T, okay? And if I do that, I can get T times one plus ML divided by MR is equal to two MLG. And just to save some space and, and not, not continue scrolling, I'm just gonna write T is equal to two MLG. I keep writing M, the L really, really big. MLG over one plus ML over MR. And that's that. So now we have an equation that only has T in it. Sorry, that only has the variables we are interested in, which if I zoom out real quick, you can see that this equation only has these variables in it. And it even goes along with the answer we gave. Oh, unfortunately five, let me see what my, there we go. We can see that 5.2, sorry, sorry, what am I saying? We're missing 5.1 here, and 5.1 was asking us what the acceleration should be if ML is much smaller than MR. Oh wait, sorry, no, that is M. That is that is 5.2. It's saying if ML is much smaller than MR, which of the following would you expect to be the closest reading on the spring scale in terms of ML, MR, and NG? Well, if we look at this problem, if MR is really big and ML is really, really small, this bottom portion right here is just gonna approach one, right? Because this part is gonna approach zero, and therefore, our final equation looks something like this, right, over one, which is the same thing as just saying two mlg equals tension. So this should look familiar because if you look at the problem 5.2, I'll pull it up in just a second, right here, it's saying which of these equations explains the choice? Well, we have it right there, two mlg, which is exactly what we got. So the answer should be 2MLG. And also for 5.3, we also answered the same question. We've determined the general expression for the reading on the spring scale in terms of ML, MR, and G. And just for the hell of it, let's do an example. So let's do an example where the two forces are equal to each other, and we'll see what we get. Okay, so here's our, equa here's our original equation, or our correct equation. Where's my white marker? There it is. Okay, so I'm gonna plug that in. I'm just gonna rewrite that over here. T equals two mLg 
over 1 plus ml over mr. And in the case of, let me just really quickly do a sketch, this is 100 newtons, not 100 newtons, this is 100 kilograms. This is 100 kilograms. We have some spring here, and it goes down, and this is also 100 kilograms. And our intuition, not sorry, not our intuition, our intuition was completely wrong, but the answer we know from both class and from you know similar problems is the spring here should be reading 100 kilograms times, oh, better yet, better yet, let's not write this in kilograms, because it's not going to help us, 100 newtons, a force is each object's force, the reading here should only be 100 newtons, okay? So let's check that out using our math. Tension equals, um, well, ML times G is a equation for newtons, so let's not think about that for a second. Actually, if it's 100 newtons, let me just stop for a second. If it's 100 newtons, that means it's 10 kilograms. So let's do that. 2 times 10 G divided by 1 plus 10 over 10. This gives me... 20 G over 2, which equals 10 G, which equals roughly 100 Newtons. So we can see that even at the end, our equation makes perfect sense with our correct answer. That no matter, even if we have two weights falling off of that same spring, the final force should only be 100 Newtons. Okay, cool. And that's that.